So we're coming up on a year since the release of my most popular video, ranking South Park worst to best. Now because of how long it took me to make that video, I was actually in the process of constructing the list at this time last year. Since then, the people over at South Park have been kind enough to bless us with two hour long specials, as well as an entire new season. Granted it was only six episodes, but we'll take what we can get. Not only that, but my opinions on the episodes I ranked have changed over time. In the past year, I've probably rewatched the series at least three times, and because of this, I have some new feelings and changed perspectives on some of the episodes. So I thought it would be fun to take a step back and reflect on my most popular video, not only to share my ever-changing opinions, but also give my opinion on the new South Park we've been gifted, and add it to the official worst to best list that has become so notorious among the South Park fandom. So for the first part of this video, I will be addressing the comments and some of the things that people pointed out about my South Park ranking video. Then I will be discussing the episodes whose rankings have changed, and finally I will be discussing the placement of the Season 25 episodes. So if you're only here to see the Season 25 placements, then you can go ahead and skip to this timestamp right here. Either way, I do recommend you stick around till the end because I have something very big planned for the end of the video, and I think you guys will enjoy it. Hold on, slow down. We'll get to you, okay? Don't worry. All in time. So, with the intro out of the way, let's get into it. Revisiting South Park Ranked Worst to Best. Weirdly enough, the comment that I saw the most on my ranking video was people pointing out the fact that my online activity is unprotected. Because of this, I've started using today's sponsor, Private Internet Access VPN. Private Internet Access is the most customizable VPN on the market. They give you tons of options to configure a VPN however you would like. It hides your online activity from anyone who's trying to see it, whether that be your internet service provider, government sensors, or even hackers. With private internet access, no one is getting to that data. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and it works by changing your IP address and rerouting it through an encrypted tunnel, effectively camouflaging you as you browse the web. They have apps for almost any device you could think of, including Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and many, many more. On top of all that protection, you can use it to stream any shows and movies that are not available in your country by setting your region to a country where they are available. The most important thing they include, however, is their no logs policy, meaning that they don't record or store any of their users' data, and it's been proven several times in court. They are also the most transparent VPN provider with over 30 million downloads. They promise a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's not really any risk in giving it a try. Even better, if you use my link you can get started now paying only $2.11 a month plus 3 months free. That is genuinely an incredible deal that you will not find anywhere else, so please take advantage of that as soon as possible. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click the first link in the description and sign up now risk free and start protecting yourself when browsing the web. And another huge thank you to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. Alright, so first I'm just going to talk about the things that are very obvious and quick to address. So yes, obviously the music is way too loud and repetitive. I'm very sorry about that. I made this video when I did not understand how balancing sound worked and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, sorry about that. I would change it if I could, but I can't. Next, there were some instances in which I mislabeled an episode or listed the wrong season or episode number. Once again, I'm sorry about that. I would go back and change it if I could. Unfortunately, I cannot. So yeah. And lastly, some of my analysis were very lackluster throughout the video, and I know this upset a lot of you, I was trying my best to prevent the video from being just ridiculously long, so I had to make sacrifices, and that ended up coming mostly through the analysis of the mid-tier episodes. So if I didn't give a good analysis of an episode you really enjoyed, I apologize for that, but I had to do it, I just didn't want the video to be too long, so yeah. So when I was recording and editing this video, I never realized how many times I was saying the word episode. And it wasn't even until you guys started pointing it out in the comments that I realized I said it way too many times. I literally cannot rewatch this video now without hearing every single time I say it and making a mental note of it and it just frustrates me. So I'm very sorry about that. I'm sure it was very annoying for you guys, but I thought it would be funny to ask you guys to count how many times I actually said it and give a shout out to whoever actually counted it. So I received two answers that seemed like they could be correct. From Prola number six, he said that I said episode 522 times and episodes 89 times. And it seems like they actually counted, so I'm just gonna give them the shout out. But then Midnight Parks came in with the 200 IQ play by using the transcript feature on the video and using control F to find how many times I actually said it. And they said it said 640 times. 
So either way, I said it way too many times, and to try to make up for it, I'm gonna not say it as much as possible throughout the rest of this video, so yeah, hopefully that helps. Hey, get out of here, I'm not talking about you. So it's inevitable in a show like South Park that I'm gonna miss some of the references that they make, and unfortunately that can influence the ranking of some of your favorite ep- I mean, um... Installments. So if I didn't get a reference and it affected the placement of an episode that you enjoyed, I want to apologize for that. Um, I'm not perfect, I'm not gonna get every single reference, but you know, I tried my best to the- No, not you. I'm not talking about you. Not yet, at least. However, there were several instances in which people believed that I didn't get a reference, and I actually did get it, so let's talk about some of those. In White People Renovating Houses, many people believe that I didn't get the reference to those HGTV shows where white people flip houses. And trust me, I am well aware of those shows. They were literally a staple of my childhood. My parents had them on 24 hours a day. What I was referring to when discussing my confusion about the plot and the annoyance of one repeated joke actually had nothing to do with this plotline at all. I was referring to the Alexa plotline, which feels like it tried to tackle six different topics that were relevant at the time, but never managed to bring any of them together into any sort of cohesive plot, and it was just an absolute cluster. And the one repeated joke that I was referring to was how these people just kept doing this for the entire episode with nothing else. Funny enough, the only part of this that I found remotely funny, or interesting, was the house renovating parody. Other than that, this episode is still really bad. Another example is In A Million Little Fibers. A lot of people thought that I didn't get that it was a parody of the dude that went on Oprah with the fake autobiography. I did get that, but as I will make very clear by the end of this video, just because something is a parody does not make it funny or interesting. Not only that, but this episode contains what is probably the least funny side plot in the entire show, so yeah, it still sucks in my opinion, parody or not. So the story behind Terrence and Philip in Not Without My Anus is a very funny story because the episode was an April Fool's prank after fans were left on a cliffhanger at the end of season 1, waiting to find out who Cartman's father was. When season 2 released, instead of finding out who Cartman's father was, Fans were met with the very special presentation of Terrence and Philip in Not Without My Anus. Of course, I was aware of all this while making my list, but some people couldn't believe I was because I ranked it so low in spite of how hilarious it is to prank the fans like that. And I completely acknowledge that it is very funny. The idea to leave the fans on a cliffhanger and then not give them what they want is hilarious actually. The thing is, I wasn't ranking how funny the ideas behind the episodes were. I was ranking the entertainment value of the content of each episode. And because this installment is so intentionally bad, I get no enjoyment from watching it. Therefore, the ranking makes sense because I'm ranking it based on the execution of the episode, not the idea behind it. No matter how funny the idea behind it is. So yes, I think the idea behind this episode is very funny, but the episode itself is not, and that's why it's ranked so low. Finally is everyone's favorite annoying creature, the Jack Officer. Now I'll admit I actually didn't get this one when I first watched it as I had never seen Star Wars The Phantom Menace. After watching that movie, I understood that the Jack Officers were a parody of Jar Jar Binks as a way to make fun of the idea of the loud, annoying comic relief character. And this is where I will return to my philosophy that just because something is a parody does not make it funny. This is the perfect example of how to do a parody wrong since they basically said, hey, this thing is dumb and extremely annoying. Let's show everyone how dumb and annoying it is by doing the exact same thing ourselves, except we'll make it even more annoying. That'll get our point across for sure. And yes, this form of parody is effective in getting their point across, but it also succeeds in creating an episode that is entirely unwatchable because it parodies it too accurately. This is not at all similar to something I will be discussing at the end of the video that I'm sure you're not waiting in anticipation for, so please don't watch till the end of the video. This one is really my fault because I don't think I made it clear enough my opinions on the darker installments. There are several times throughout the list that I declare that an episode is dark, and then I go on to say I wasn't a big fan of the episode. Understandably, many people got the impression that I'm overly sensitive and I don't like dark humor. 
These are probably the people that didn't watch the whole video because if they had, they would have seen that my top 20 is filled with some of the darkest moments in the entire series. But regardless, in reality, I'm a big fan of dark humor. I was about as edgy and offensive as you could get in middle school, so I like to believe there's still some of that inside of me. But when I indicated that I had a problem with an episode that was dark, it wasn't because it was dark. It was because the dark themes didn't work with the rest of the episode, in my opinion. For example, in Stanley's Cup, I understand the point of the installment is to be on the losing side of someone else's storybook ending, and I think that's a funny idea. But even though the ending makes sense, it felt like the goal was to make the ending as dark as possible, and in the process of creating the ending, they forgot that just being dark doesn't instantly make it funny. You still have to do something funny with the darker aspects. The same can be said for the China problem with the Indiana Jones scenes. Like, I'm fine with the joke that they were trying to make, and it was even kind of funny the first time, but then it kept progressing. It's like they forgot that it was supposed to be funny, and they just kept trying to make it darker. They made their point the first time they made the joke, and it was actually kind of funny, but then they kept going and adding to it and making it worse, and it didn't get any funnier, so it's just darker, and there's just not really a purpose in my opinion. I guess what I'm trying to say is that dark humor is very funny, but if it's done correctly. Just because something is dark does not make it instantly funny. There still needs to be some aspect of cleverness or substance to the joke. Like, I feel like the people commenting on that video saying that I'm so sensitive and have no sense of humor are probably the people that claim they have a dark sense of humor, but their humor is just laughing at stuff because it's offensive, not because it's funny. Like, there's no substance to any of the jokes. It's just offensive equals funny. However, I want to make it clear that I do find dark humor funny if it's done correctly. I think that you can joke about anything and that there shouldn't be any limits in comedy. I mean, South Park is my favorite show, so you guys know that. However, my theory is that if you're going to make jokes that are offensive or could be seen as offensive, then you have to make sure that those jokes are very clever and very funny, because if they're the same tired jokes people have been telling for years, that's when it actually becomes offensive because you're just picking the easiest jokes to make and it just takes no talent. Okay, so tangent aside, to summarize, I enjoy dark humor. I think it's a good form of humor if you do it correctly. If you don't do it correctly, it doesn't work for me, and that's my opinion. However, there were some times that I said that an episode didn't work because of the dark humor, but they actually grew on me, so let's go ahead and go into our next point. So I placed this episode in the C tier at number 251, and I will be the first to admit that I had no clue what I was thinking when ranking this. My reasoning for placing it so low was that I didn't like how the dark themes worked in the episode, but after rewatching it several times, that's literally what makes it so great. Watching the slow mental breakdown of both of Butter's parents at the hands of an affair is perfectly contrasted by Butter's sweet innocence and complete obliviousness to the horror of the situation. It's hilarious and deserved much better than what I gave it. I don't know what I was smoking when ranking this installment, but this is a fantastic one and I'm officially moving it to low S tier. This one is another butter centered episode and I placed it in the A tier at number 70. And while this is still a really good rating, after a few rewatches, this one also deserved better. Once again, Butters being completely unaware of what he's really doing while simultaneously becoming really good at it, and even quote unquote changing the game, is genius. And don't even get me started on the side plot with Detective Harris. This is gross out humor done to perfection, and it adds a very strong B plot to an already great episode. I'm officially moving this one to the middle of S tier. Okay, I'll admit to being a bit too hard on this one. While I'm still not a fan of the episode, I can acknowledge that it's definitely much funnier than any of the other D tier episodes, especially with the Mr. Mackie tooth decay plot. Because of that, I feel comfortable moving it to the very top of C tier, but in my opinion it still doesn't belong higher than that, but it's definitely better than I gave it. Same thing kind of applies with this episode. I'm still not a big fan of the main plot with Ike, but when I was making the list, I completely forgot about the side plot with Mr. Mackie and IntelliLink, and I think that plot alone carries this episode up to a low B tier as it is very funny. Now this is already ranked extremely high, all the way at number 14. 
but upon some rewatches, I think it deserves to be even higher, so I'm going to go ahead and swap it for number 4, Trapped in the Closet. This is still a fantastic episode, however after some rewatches, I think number 4 was a bit too high, and Osimo would better fill that spot. While both episodes are still absolute classics, I think this ranking makes a little more sense. So when I was ranking season 20, I kind of ranked it as two separate parts. There is the early season and the late season, and this is because the entire season is continuous anyways, so it made sense to split it into before the election and after the election. I did this because in my opinion, the second half of the season was not nearly as good as the first half of the season. So I ended up placing the second half in C tier and the first half in B tier. After a rewatch, while I still think the first half is better than the second half, season 20 as a whole is honestly worse than I even remembered, and I genuinely just didn't enjoy watching it again. Because of this, I'm moving the first half of season 20 into the low C tier along with the second half. Okay, so we're finished addressing everything that has changed since the original video. Um, looks like I addressed every single episode that I wanted to. I have missed absolutely nothing when it comes to episodes. There's nothing that the comments would get mad at me about for ignoring and pretending I didn't see it. You know, if I just straight up refused to talk about an episode, people would get really upset about that. So of course, I'm not going to be doing that. I've talked about everything that was really brought up in the comments. There's nothing that I'm missing, I don't think, so... No! Stop! I said I'm not talking about you. Just leave me alone already. Okay, let's move on to season 25. So since the end of season 25, you guys have been asking for my opinion on it and how I felt about it, so here we go. Season 25 was good. It had some ups, it had some downs, but I think all around, it was a pretty good season. You can tell that with this season, there was a conscious effort to try to turn back the clock and sort of go to a more vintage style of South Park. They tried to make the plots a lot simpler and a lot more focused on the boys, and I think all around it was mostly a success. There were some issues as we'll discuss, but yeah, let's go ahead and go into each individual episode. Pajama Day is an episode that I'm kind of mixed on. Let's go ahead and start with the positives. So, first of all, Mr. Garrison is back to his old self, which I was extremely excited to see as he's always been a personal favorite character of mine, and it's really nice to see him finally move past the Trump stuff. And not only is he back to being his old self, they succeed in making him feel like his old self, because he's back to being a completely awful teacher, you know, not actually teaching anything, instead focusing on his relationship and his everyday life, so it really fits his character, of course, and I'm glad to see that this version of Mr. Garrison is back. I also like that they're attempting to return to basics, you know, using a very simple plot, just the kids being kids, you know, treating pajama day like it's the end of the world if they can't wear their pajamas, so I like that. I also enjoyed PC Principal a lot in this episode, as he bans the kids from wearing their pajamas, and he's not willing to change his mind or admit that he's wrong to the point where he's literally willing to give up being a principal instead of admitting that he's wrong. I like the message here, sort of a commentary on the life or death attitude people have about opinions nowadays, where no one is willing to change their mind on things because of the unwillingness of society to allow people to acknowledge their previous wrongdoings and move past them. I also thought it was funny how the constant references to fascism and the state of Germany in the 1940s parodies how quickly people are willing to throw extremist labels on things when they're just not that serious. All we can say is, Vert Zeihen for Davidser. And also the Matt Damon references are pretty funny about that Crypto.com ad. That was pretty good. Now onto the things that I did not like as much. The biggest issue I have with this episode by far is the Pajama Time song. It goes on for way too long. The song itself just feels forced, in my opinion. Like, it feels like Matt and Trey told their team to make a song about pajamas, and they had no input on it. It has extremely generic lyrics and a vocal delivery that is just so, like, bland that it hurts, and a trap beat that feels so out of touch, it's like a corporate office made it for some advertising campaign. I'm feeling a strong two to a light three, Tran. In all seriousness, the difference in quality between this and basically any other original South Park song is massive, and when it's taking up nearly two minutes of the episode with almost nothing progressing the story while it happens, it definitely hurts the episode in my opinion. About halfway through the episode, when everyone starts to wear pajamas around town, it quickly shifts to a parallel about masks. 
Honestly, the whole subplot just kind of felt forced and it didn't really say anything. It really felt like we had a good thing going throughout this episode with a silly plot about the kids just being kids. And then we had to go back to the same tired jokes that we've been getting for literally two years now. Like we just had nearly four full hours of South Park content based exclusively on the pandemic. And just when I think that maybe this episode will just be a silly plot about the kids trying to wear pajamas to school, they hit me over the head with the mass commentary that's been done before. And what is up with Mr. Mackey's voice? Like, why does he sound like that? Did Trey just like forget how to do his voice entirely for only this episode? Because they never explained it, so I don't know. You don't understand how important pajama day is to kids. It's like the Met Gala for children. I realize that this is making it sound like I don't like this episode, but I definitely did like it all around. There were a lot of funny moments, and while it definitely had its issues, I liked the attempt at returning to the basics and using a plot that is very simple and not overwhelming. Placing it in the list, I'll put it in a lowish B tier at the 200th place. So this is the episode that a lot of people have been raving about. I believe it's the majority consensus that this is the best from this season. And weirdly enough, I didn't even really like it when I first watched it, but after a couple of rewatches, it has definitely grown on me a lot. So right off the bat, I think it was pretty clever the way the creators decided to spend the entire episode gaslighting the viewer, claiming that Tolkien's name has always been Tolkien, and it's because of our unconscious racial bias that we believed otherwise, since only someone with a severe racial bias could have such a horrible thought. Stan is in the same boat as us, and he cannot believe that he has been unconsciously racist this entire time, so for the rest of the episode, he spends it trying to make it up to Token, but inadvertently ends up singling out and tokenizing him even more than ever before. One thing I noticed that I haven't seen anyone else point out yet is that this plot is actually almost identical to the plot from the season two episode, Conjoined Fetus Lady. In that episode, Nurse Gollum is singled out and given tons of sympathy throughout the entire episode by Kyle's mom and Principal Victoria in an effort to bring awareness to her disability. It's revealed at the end that she hates all of their efforts because the last thing she wanted was to be singled out and put on display for her disability. In a sense, she was being tokenized by the city in the same way Tolkien is by Stan. I think this plot of inadvertently singling someone out is used really effectively, and it makes for a lot of funny moments. Oh yeah, and when Randy hears of a strike coming to all non-black owned weed businesses, he brings Tolkien's dad into the company in a completely conscious effort to tokenize him and prevent a loss in business. Luckily, Tolkien's father discovers Randy's plan and decides to build his own company across the street with the knowledge that he's picked up from his time with Randy. This comes back into play later in the season and it was a strong way to end the episode. This was definitely one of my favorites from the season. The commentary was concise and the jokes were funny. It's really all you can ask for in a good South Park episode. So, putting it into the list, it'll end up around mid to low A tier at the 102nd spot. So in my original ranking video, I got some complaints about my overuse of the word classic. And rightfully so, uh, I said it way too many times. However, here I am using it again because this episode had such a classic feel to it. It was a Cartman episode that was done very well, and if you remember my list video, you'll remember an important factor in some of the best episodes was what I called Cartman being Cartman. And this one utilized that idea to great success. It follows Cartman's attempts to ruin his mother's new job as a real estate agent by taking all of her customers. This is because he's not willing to let his mom spend less time with him. I really enjoyed the simplicity of this episode, whether it was the classic feeling of Cartman constructing and executing an overly complicated plan, for something that isn't that big of a deal, or even the people from the city that devolve into chickens clucking because of their very limited vocabulary. One thing I also loved a lot was that they were able to include Lou Kim in a way that really made sense and sort of tied the commentary together well. These shitty people come with their fancy shitty crows and their big shitty cars, you know, and these shitty people have a shitty way of doing things that will expose us all to their shitty ideas. And of course, the ending was pretty funny too, with Leanne quitting her job and being forced to move her and Cartman into an old hot dog stand. All around, this was by far the most classic feeling episode out of the season, as it focused on a relatively simple plot and made references to current events, but didn't just directly parallel and comment on specific events. I know I said that The Big Fix was probably my favorite episode from this season, but honestly, I think this one surpassed it, and because of that, I will put it in the A tier at the 65th spot.
So now we go from what was the strongest episode of the season to what is probably the weakest in my opinion. I enjoyed the plot of Mr. Mackey and his Cold War nostalgia. I thought that it was relatively funny, but the Butters plot, not so much. I really don't know what it was about this subplot with Butters competing against a Russian in a dressage competition, but something about it just didn't land for me. I could tell there were jokes that were meant to be funny, but for some reason nothing really got me and it made me enjoy the episode less. I feel kind of lame since I don't really know why I didn't like this subplot, so I have no way to justify my dislike for it. I just didn't really like it. And one thing I can say is that the gags with the horse I personally never found funny. Like it felt a little too immature for my taste, and I know that's insane coming from someone that's a South Park fan, but as I mentioned before, I like dumb immature humor when it's done with an acknowledgement and self-awareness, and in this episode I didn't really feel that much. All around, it was an okay episode, I didn't feel too strongly about it in any way, so I'm going to place it in the C tier at number 290. Help My Teenager Hates Me is another example of how they were able to successfully recapture the feel of some of the classic episodes in these newer ones. It starts with the boys getting into airsoft and quickly discovering how awful teenagers can be as they basically adopt teenagers as their partners for airsoft. The commentary feels super random because it's not like Matt or Trey have any children that are teenagers, the closest is Matt's 12 year old son, which is getting close to teenager levels but not quite there. Regardless, this is a great episode. I don't have a lot to say about it because it's a pretty straightforward episode, but it definitely gave me the classic feels and I enjoyed it. I especially enjoyed the ending when all the dads showed up to help the boys take down the teenagers and they even brought Jimbo for Cartman. It was a sweet ending to an already great episode. I'm going to put it in the A tier at number 124. And finally, to round out the season, we had the Credigree Weed St. Patrick's Day special. This episode was just extremely bizarre, but I still enjoyed it. It starts off where we left off from the big fix, with Randy having a St. Patrick's Day special and competing with Token's family across the street. Meanwhile, Butters is arrested for pinching people against their will, and he eventually meets up with Randy after he's arrested for getting in a fight with Token's father. They team up to try to break out of the jail, and this is the point when the episode just goes completely off the rails, like it stops making any sense, Randy all of a sudden has these St. Patrick's Day powers, and St. Patrick himself comes down and starts basically assaulting people on the street. It just devolves to be completely wacky and nonsensical, but I think that actually ends up playing in its favor because the absurdity is what makes it funny. I also like how they made it very clear that the boys did not want to be involved in this plot in any way, and yet they kept getting roped into it. That also reminded me of classic South Park because that's a trope that they used to use all the time. All around, despite how bizarre and nonsensical it gets, I definitely enjoyed it, so I'm going to go ahead and place it in the low B tier at around 174. Alright, so we made it to the end. We discussed all of season 25, and we discussed everything that needed to be discussed about my ranking video. Um, once again, I don't think I missed anything else that was important. There was nothing that a lot of people commented about that I needed to address, at least not one that I can remember. Um, why am I fading out? Uh, does anyone else notice that it's, it's, I'm getting quieter? What is happening? Pip is the best episode. You literally didn't gave valid reason to critic the great Pip expectations. Episode, rather, it's not Matt and Trey's fault. You're an illiterate it. fool who doesn't read books. Damn, it's Pip a is hilarious your worst. parody of it's it. It's in my top judging ten. it without clever. having read the book. You don't is even like describe judging the comedy in a language well. you don't it's not Pip, It was exactly in the South Park style. So long ago, the early episodes, the only way they had to cut the form of the title yet, read it. So they had to strong well. It's not sad. It was so little. It's rather scary. It's telling some more things about the Indian culture. Read a book. The Pip episode is a parody of that itself. Was Darwin novel. See why they probably didn't find it also felt sorry for him. How can you say they were then they invented butters who basically the exact episode same, and character but more related to the ignore but making him the worst book. So, 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 so Pip was killed off in the background episode. Up till then he was my favorite character. Pip was frustrating as utter bullshit. Stop! Fine. I'll talk about it.
spent the last year studying this novel. I've memorized every single word from every single page for the entire book. I spent at least 10,000 hours just staring at the cover to try to get a better understanding of what was in the mind of Charles Dickens while writing. After I had memorized the entire book, I went back and read the entire thing backwards to try to make sure that there were no hidden messages I was missing throughout the novel. So now that I have more knowledge on this classic piece of literature than any other human being that has ever lived, I think it's time for me to give my final opinion on the episode 5th. The episode that masterfully parodies this iconic piece of literature that's been studied and taught for over 150 years now. And the episode does a fantastic job of capturing what it feels like to be reading Great Expectations. And by that I mean, the episode is still incredibly f***ing boring. 